I want to talk to you about psyching God out, jerking God around, playing games, toying with his heart, and trifling with his love. Now, this is not going to be a real friendly message. I'm going to tell you that right from the jump. Because I see a lot of things in different churches and I hear a lot of things. And I know that there are many who talk out of both sides of their mouth. I remember my husband used to have a term, my late husband, Milton. He used to have a term where he would say, girl, you're talking out the side of your neck. <laughs> well, that's what we do with God sometimes. I remember, I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. I remember years ago, there was a guy who was dating a chick and she was a real lady. You could tell she was a kind-hearted soul and she was genuine. And he was on survivor mode. She wanted him to commit, and he just wanted a roof over his head. So he knew how to play the fishing game with a woman's heart. And this is what a lot of abusers and batterers do. One minute, oh, she was the world to him. The next minute, he couldn't be bothered. And then before you turn around, he would literally be threatening to break up with her. Well, I guess you don't want me in your life anymore. I'm, I've got to think of some other plans because this doesn't seem to be working out. I mean, it was like this push and pull, this constant jerking this poor woman around. Well, I knew what he was doing. Sometimes you pump. And when you pump, you push and you pull. And you push and you pull. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. And you push and you pull. And what that does, it causes a suction chamber. The suction, the power of that suction becomes so strong that you almost need help of another instrument or another person to pull that thing away from what it's attached to. But this is what happens. That is what happens to a woman's heart or a man's heart when somebody is doing the push and pull on their heartstrings. They love them. They got to have them. Oh, it's you and me the next minute. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got to think about something else. I don't know if this is going to work because you don't seem to take me seriously. You know, I don't really know if you're serious about this and I don't have time to waste. So, you know, maybe I ought to look around. And then the person's like, oh, no, no, no. Where did you get that from? And before you know it, you got to push and then you got to pull. And what you're doing is causing a suction chamber so that when, this is the way the spirit of seduction works too, by the way, so that when the suction is strong and you know that it is almost irre... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost undetachable because you've got that person sucked all the way in now. You can treat them any old way you want. And they're so afraid of losing you, even though you're really not that much of a catch. But they're so afraid of losing you or losing out on this relationship that they will let you run all over them. Well, let me tell you something, Buster, and any of you people out there playing those games. God don't play. You remember how the kids used to say 10, 15 years ago, homie, don't play that. God don't play that. He is not going to play those kind of games. You push and pull and push and pull, and one time you're going you gonna to push one, one time too many, and God's going to go, boop, because he can't be sucked in like all the other fools you've been playing with. And I don't mean to be insulting to call them fools. What I mean is foolish for letting you even play those games with their hearts. God sees. He knows. He knows when you're playing. 
And there's going to come a time you're going to look around. That's why the Bible says, call on the Lord while he may be found. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you are calling and you're pushing and you're, it's, it, this is what Christians, Christians do. One minute they're in church. Oh, hallelujah, praise you. Oh, God is so good. Oh, he blesses me. Oh, I love him so. He's a wonderful God. <clears throat> God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. We know all these little phrases and all these little cliches because we know how to act in church. Now, don't we? But then when we get around the corner, and the saints aren't watching and the pastor can't hear and nobody's aware of what's going on. Oh, baby, we're going to do what we want to do. And, and, you know, God just has to understand. So you're pushing him away so you can do your thing. Mm -hmm. And you get back to church, you get around the saints or you can't pay a bill. Oh, Father, oh, have mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, right. You really think God is that stupid? I'm not going to go any further. What I want to say to you is God knows the heart. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? You don't even know how wicked your heart is and neither do I. So you have to stay close up under God so he can make sure you don't slide to the left, slide to the right, or backslide. Do you hear what I'm saying? Be careful. Be careful how you play with God and trifle with his love. He's not a play toy and God is no fool. Do you hear me? So I say to you now, repent to God while you have time. There comes a point where God says, my spirit will not always strive with you. Be careful here. That's your warning. God bless you. God bless and keep you. And I hope and pray that you wise up and that you stop dancing to two different songs. You can't ballet with the Lord and do the jig with the devil or do the cha-cha with the Lord and do the grind with the devil. <sighs> Think about that. Pray about it. And please, if this applies to you, stop.